A giant fish hat, dresses floating down from the sky and bubbles. It can only mean one thing. Paris Fashion Week is wrapping up in the French capital. It's the moment designers show us what we'll be wearing next spring and summer. And to tell us more, I'm joined in the studio by France 24's Hackseat Mayers Belkin. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Now, fashion is one of the world's most polluting industries. So it's no surprise then that for Paris Fashion Week, amid a global climate emergency, labels were looking to showcase what few green credentials they have. Absolutely. Fashion is increasingly finding itself under fire for its wasteful ways. And one label very keen to prove that it's taking notice is Dior. Now, designer uh, Maria Grazia Curie said that she wanted to celebrate nature in a meaningful way with this collection. Uh, she set her show in a makeshift forest, as you can see there, uh, an elaborate uh, custom-made affair. But each tree, 164 of them in total, are actually, as you can see there, in burlap sacks, uh, ready and waiting uh, to be planted across the Paris region. And uh, you can also see in some of those images that some of the models are wearing their hair in rather elaborate plaits. A possible reference to Swedish teen activist uh, Greta Thunberg, possibly. Uh, now, one of the stars in the front row at that show was Leticia Castor. Uh, let's take a listen. Thankfully, we're waking up and becoming aware of the situation. It's the future, and it's also the next generation. It's the moment to talk about it. If anything, we're even a bit too late. So we need to be aware and talk about it and have this discussion be present in the world of luxury. Well, it wasn't just Dior. There were several other fashion houses that hyped environmental chic. Nick Rushworth has more. Stella McCartney is a pioneer of sustainable and ethical fashion. She has never used fur, leather, feathers or animal glues. Over the summer, she tied up with the LVMH group, which includes dozens of the world's top fashion brands. She'll be advising CEO Bernard Arnault on how to respond to the climate emergency. You know, the opportunity to work with Mr. Arnault as his sustainable advisor is, is a hugely exciting prospect for me. I'm really, I think that the message it's given out to the industry is one of, of, of really meaning this now, that this is an important issue. McCartney's call to act now comes days after the group launched efforts to be more environmentally friendly. It plans to cut its greenhouse gas emissions by a quarter by next year. However, not all the messaging is working. Arnaud caused a storm with his criticism of the Swedish teenage climate activist Greta Thunberg, saying she's a dynamic young girl, but she's surrendering completely to catastrophism. I find that her views are demoralizing for young people. That drew swift rebukes, including within the fashion industry. One up-and-coming French designer, Marine Serre, meanwhile, in her show, took on the environment question, depicting a post-apocalyptic future to demand action. We talk, 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 but I'm not here to talk about the environment. I'm here to do something. Half of her designs on show were made with upcycled material, which is the business model of one label that showed on the fringes of Paris Fashion Week called the Etiquette. It is a luxury recycling fashion brand. Its clothes are made entirely from recycled fabric. This piece was made using a lot of tweed scraps, which we got from a workshop in central Paris. The lining is made with sheets that have been collected from major Parisian hotels. The consensus is that fashion is polluting too much, there's overproduction and waste, and for some, the future involves reworking the old. Perhaps it wasn't just the environment. Several designers had a political message, like the designer John Galliano, who's at Margiela. So this collection for a Maison Margiela was quite a remarkable tribute to the heroes and heroines, the uh, resistance fighters, the nurses of uh, the Second World War. Now this at a time uh, that, according to Galliano, we're witnessing the very breakdown of the moral fibre of society, the trivialisation of democracy and also uh, the European Union. I think it's fair to say this could be the first ever anti-Brexit uh, collection we've seen and also uh, very possibly a further attempt by Galliano to redeem himself after that 2011 anti-Semitic outburst uh, in the Marais. Now, for this collection, uh, rather interestingly, he also found inspiration 
Now, in the story of a World War II love affair that we broadcast on this channel during the 75th anniversary of D-Day recently, a US a GI was reunited with his wartime sweetheart 75 years after they first met. And in the photo that the GI had kept with him all those years of his love, she was wearing a pretty impressive uh, jumpsuit that she'd uh, sewed herself. Now, there's a rather touching uh, tribute in this collection uh, to uh, that jumpsuit, rather a touching homage there from Galliano. And there was also uh, another element of this show uh, that definitely got tongues uh, wagging, uh, a particularly striking walk uh, from one German model a called strut, Leon Dame. Say. Absolutely, let's take a listen. So some people definitely enjoyed that. Others saying he looked a little bit like a newborn giraffe. I'll let you decide. <laughs> you. And also um, the Indian designer Manisha Aurora's um, show promoted women's rights and diversity, didn't it? Absolutely. So Manisha Aurora had a pretty moving message, actually, with this latest uh, collection. Uh, diversity was, as you said, the word of the day, uh, with models drawn from the worlds of drag culture, also from Instagram. There were beards, wigs, uh, high-octane makeup, of course, a lot of intricate face painting, too. The message here being that family can go well beyond the rather narrow biological definition of family. Uh, that show, unsurprisingly, perhaps, set to a soundtrack of Sister Sledge's We Are Family. So a lot of political messages there, but at Balenciaga this fashion week, uh, a very political aesthetic too. Now, for a start, the setting of this show uh, was a film studio uh, remodelled to resemble, of all things, the European Parliament, uh, replete with blue chairs in an amphith amphitheatre-like uh, setting. Now, the inspiration behind this collection uh, was power dressing and fashion uniforms, the result, a lot of uh, extremely boxy, quite graphic jackets. Uh, actually quite a wearable collection, although it would certainly, I think, uh, raise a few eyebrows if you started wearing some of these pieces yeah, while you were thinking. canvassing in your local <laughs> constituency. And Paris Fashion Week also um, championed diversity with a nine-year-old British girl making history. Yeah, so nine-year-old uh, Daisy May Demetra, whose legs were amputated uh, due to a birth defect, uh, she's become the first double amputee child to walk the, the runway at Paris at Fashion Week. Now, Demetra uses uh, carbon blades uh, for running, but also on the catwalk. Uh, she modelled for children's wear label Lulu et Gigi uh, at a show at the Eiffel Tower. And Lulu et Gigi is really doing quite impressive things as far as diversity uh, is concerned. Models did come in all shapes and sizes. And we also saw one model uh, with Down syndrome. Uh, so uh, a fashion label, uh, while it is extremely expensive, is very open uh, to all sorts of people. That's the message there. OK, well, aside um, from the political messages, there were actually some very cool shows, weren't there? Yeah, so this uh, Fashion Week saw the first collection by Kyoto-born designer Satoshi Kondo for Issey Miyake. Uh, it really was quite the debut. Kondo said his intention uh, was to evoke a sense of joy and judging by just how much buzz this show generated, I think uh, we can say he very much succeeded there. Uh, we saw brightly coloured, diaphanous dresses literally descending from the ceiling uh, onto models' bodies, accompanied by very colourful, playful hats. Uh, those trademark pleats uh, were very much still present and they really came into their own as models uh, danced and jumped around the space. Uh, it was really a celebration of the body in movement. OK, well, it's one of our favourites, so let's take a look. <laughs> The theme of the collection is a sense of joy. I wanted to look into the relationship between the human body and clothes, and I wanted to express the joy of wearing clothes and the joy of movement. So you see the models dancing. certainly does look fun. And Rick Owen's show was our producer's, Jenny's favourite show, so that's why we're talking about it. 
Absolutely. Uh, last but not least, never least, in fact, with Rick Owens, uh, he revealed a dazzling collection of otherworldly models adorned in what looked like rather abstract armour. Uh, geometric headgear abounded, as did powerful shoulders, uh, and a rather adventurous colour palette, at least for Rick Owens. Now, he does love to shock. This show was no different. We had a fair few models strutting down the runway with their heads, uh, in fact, half shaved. Now, I'm not sure this is a look that's going to uh, trickle down to mainstream fashion necessarily, but it definitely uh, did mean there was a lot to smile about in this show. OK, Axie, thank you so much for joining us. That brings us to the end of our Paris Fashion Week wrap. We're going to leave you with an exhibition called The Chanel Shows, which is a tribute to the late designer Karl Lagerfeld by British photographer Simon Proctor. It's at the Royal Monceau Hotel until the end of October. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Thank you.